You remind me of my Jeep, I wanna wax you, baby. Remind me of my bank account, I wanna spend you, babe. That's from You Remind Me of Something by R. Kelly. The song is smooth, with a funky bottom and a sexy lead vocalist. Why does it grit my teeth every time I hear it? Well, it's not because I'm, as one of my sons put it, an old man who just can't interpret the young whippersnappers. That said, I must admit I'm more at home with R&B, with the soft significance of an Anita Baker or even Brownstone. Singers like Sade and, yes y'all, Whitney. I also enjoy much of rap for its vitality, its rawness, its irreverence, and its creativity. Rap is an authentic descendant of a people with ancient African world traditions, from griots who sang praise songs to their kings, to bluesmen who transmuted their pain into art. For a generation born into America's chilling waters of discontent, into the 1970s and 80s, into periods of denial, cutbacks, and emergent white supremacy, one must understand how love songs sound false and discordant, out of tune with their gritty survivalist realities. When their mothers and fathers were teenagers, Curtis Mayfield sang, We're winners, and never let anybody say that you can't make it, cause the people's mind is in your way. We're moving on up. Earth, wind, and fire in exquisite harmony, keep your head to the sky, and Bob Marley and the Whalers thunder over rolling bass line. Get up, stand up, stand up for your rights. The hip-hop generation came into consciousness on Tina Turner's What's Love Got To Do With It? or an egocentric mix that glorified materialism, like Run DMC's My Adidas about a pair of sneakers or Houdini's Friends, How No One Can Be Trusted. Their parents grew up in the midst of hope and black liberation's consciousness. The youth grew up in a milieu of doggy dogism of America's retreat from its promises, of Reaganism and white right-wing resurgence. In that sense, rap's harshness merely reflects a harsher reality of lives lived amidst broken promises. How could it be otherwise? At its heart, though, rap is a multi-billion dollar business permeating America's commercial culture and influencing millions of minds. It is that all-American corporationism that transforms rap's grittiness into the gutter of materialism. A woman, a living being, reminds a man of a thing, a car. That, to me, is more perverse than the much-criticized bitches and hoes comments. This is especially objectionable when one notes that in America, in the last century, in the eyes of the law, blacks were property, chattel, things, like wagons owned by whites. That a black man, some three generations later, could sing that a black woman, his God-given mate, his female self, could remind me of my Jeep amazes me. This isn't, nor could it be, a condemnation of rap. The late Tupac Shakur's Dear Mama and Keep Your Head Up are shining examples of artistic expressions of loving oneness with one's family and people. Creative, moving, loving, funky, angry, and real are that late young man's works, as is a fair amount of the genre. Like any art form in America, it is also a business with the influences of the marketplace impacting upon its production. The more conscious its artists, the more conscious the art. Keep your head up. From death row, this is Mumia Abuja.